If you're in the dating world, there's a good chance that you've run into men who want you to chase them, pursue them, have you pay for their food, have you plan all the dates, have you decide what to do and where to go, and generally make you take on the stereotypical masculine role in the dating and relationship situation. So why are men doing this and, and should you chase him? And if not, what should you do instead? That's what we're going to be talking about today. Hello, my name is Matthew Coast and welcome to Commitment Connection. So let's get started here. Number one, so men growing up without any strong male role models is the first reason why guys are doing this. So many boys today are growing up without any kind of male role model at all. And their fathers aren't around or their fathers are too busy doing other things to properly parent their son. Many times they're not even really good role models to follow anyway. And so boys end up growing up into men with no guidance on how to be a good man so that they so they have no idea how to date or interact with women or pursue women or even know that they should pursue women. And so men need more and better male role models that they can learn from and learn about. And what does it mean to be a strong masculine man? And our society tends to demonize and tear down men from a cultural standpoint. And we're about to talk about that right now. Number two is there are major cultural changes that are happening in our society. So the Western world is really leading the charge in this one, but it's happening pretty much everywhere. Men and women are switching roles, right? And this is being encouraged and even pushed by a lot of society, by the mainstream media, by a lot of people. There's a lot of people with agendas trying to push our roles to be different, to be opposite, basically. And our society is pushing women to be more masculine and they're pushing men to be more feminine. And you'll notice that a lot of women's magazines, I was actually just looking at some women's magazines online, some internet sites online, where they've been pushing women to give up relationships altogether and, and stay single because it's, it's better to be single than to be in a relationship. And they tell women that they should not only act masculine in their normal lives, but also in dating and relationship situations as well. There's actually a bunch of activist dating advice out there. And many times you don't even know it's activist dating advice where they're teaching women to approach and chase and pursue men because they think that it gives them more power and more choice, which it absolutely doesn't. And I'll tell you why it doesn't here in just a minute. And if you're a masculine woman and you want to date a feminine man, you, you want to be the one that's putting in, uh, you know, you want to be the one that's putting in all the work while the man doesn't. And that's, that's totally fine, right? If, if you're like, Hey, I'm a masculine woman and this, I want a, ma a feminine man and I want to do the pursuing and all the chasing and all that kind of stuff. That's fine. If you do that. And if you want to do that, I'm going to tell you why I don't recommend doing that here in a second, but you're more than welcome to do it. If that's, if that's what you want. Like I know people in situations like that who are married and it works really great for them, but it, it, it's, it takes a certain kind of people to, to do that. And for most women, I don't think this works for you. And so, uh, it, so, and also men are being pushed to be more feminine and a lot of, masculine behavior is being demonized and termed as toxic, toxic masculinity when real toxic masculinity isn't being a strong man. It's being an immature man. It's a, it's a weak man who is only out for himself and doesn't care about others. And there have also been some movements to fight assault from men, which have done a lot of really great things and, and helped a lot of people out but some women have used it to abuse men who didn't do anything wrong, which created more concern around men about whether they can even pursue women or not. If you're a man and you know, how do you make sure that your advances don't come across as assault, right? You let the woman chase, you let her make the moves, you let her push things forward. Then right? The, that's the mindset that a lot of these guys have. If I, if I let her do everything, then it can't be termed as assault, which 
that actually won't save them. <laughs> they don't know. Many of them don't realize that, but it actually won't save them. And it's more of an excuse than it is a le legitimate concern in most cases, but fear is an incredibly powerful motivator. And so a lot of guys are really scared about pursuing and chasing and moving towards women and making moves on women because they're afraid that maybe it'll be misinterpreted as assault. So here's the reality. We all have masculine and feminine energy in us. And I think that things will go towards men being more masculine and women being more feminine again in the near future. And what, why would I say that? Because most women are feminine at their core and most men are masculine at their core. Men have just been wearing a feminine mask and women have just been wearing a masculine mask because we've been getting that pushed on us by society. That's not who we really are. The mask isn't us. And generally speaking, once we get back into our core, we become a lot more comfortable playing there and being there and experiencing life from there. But many of us have just been kind of pushed into these different roles of being ways that we aren't, that we get kind of like, you know, we get stuck there and going to anything else feels uncomfortable because you're most comfortable initially where you are, even if you would be better and play better and life would be better and you'd feel more comfortable in another position if things were just natural and we weren't all getting pushed into different directions. And for the most part, that's, that's femininity, right? And for most men, that's masculine. For most women, sorry, that's femininity. And for most men, that's masculinity. Not all, but just most, right? And so reason number three is the hookup culture. So a lot of men don't chase women anymore because superficial hookup situationships have become the normal thing in our culture. Meeting up just to hook up has become a normal thing for both men and women to do. It's not just men who are doing this. There are women in our community, a lot of them who are doing it as well, or were doing it before they got into our community. My suggestion is that you don't just hook up with anyone. Our community is filled with women who just hooked up with a guy, caught feelings for him, and now are in a situation where they're in love and want more from a man who doesn't want anything more with them. And so my suggestion is that you don't be one of those women, women, and don't listen to anyone who tells you that you should be. You are worth more than that. If you want something greater, then my suggestion is that you hold out for something greater and don't close yourself off because you got into a weird situation because you listened to other people or you wanted to just have some fun or whatever. And next thing you know, you caught feelings and you're in love with a guy who wants nothing to do more with you than that. So, so number four, men's dating advice teaches men to have you chasing them. And so why would they teach men this? Because they know the same thing that I'm teaching you. Whoever is more invested will value the person more. So the truth is that you should both be investing, right? If he invests a lot and you don't, it's easy for you to devalue him and your relationship and for you to walk away. If you invest a lot and he doesn't, it's easier for him to devalue you and the relationship and to walk away. Ideally, he will be investing a lot more than you will until you're in a committed relationship. You actually have most of the power starting off. And anybody that tells you that you don't have most of the power is lying to you. So before you get into a physical relationship, you have a ton of power there. And so my suggestion is that you, you make sure that he's investing in you, especially from the beginning and make sure that he's investing more than you are in him up into the committed relationship. So I recommend that you do not chase a man. First, I'm going to tell you why you shouldn't chase men. And then I'll tell you what to do instead. So first, your value in his eyes, like I was talking about earlier, is partly determined by how much he invests in you. So I'm not talking about how you value yourself, but how he values you. So this is something called the sunk cost principle. The more he invests, pursues, and gives of his time, attention, and energy to you, 
the more that he will end up valuing you. And the more you do it with him, the more you'll value him. That's why if you give everything to a man who's taking you for granted, because a lot of women are like, oh, I have to prove myself to this man and he's taking me for granted. So I have to be more and do more and all this stuff. Right. And it doesn't end up ever making him appreciate you more. It only hurts you more. Right. And it makes him appreciate you less because he's getting all these things and he doesn't, he's not doing anything for it. He's not invested. And that's why it's so important that he's pursuing and chasing you from the very beginning. He'll value you and your relationship a lot more when he does that. So second, you, if, if you're chasing him, you'll end up missing red flags that you'd normally see. So men, when they're being pursued, what they tend to do is they'll just lean back and they let a woman end up pursuing them if they aren't really that interested in the woman. Why would they do that? Because he doesn't need to do anything, right? If you're pursuing and, and he's not, and he's just chilling, right? You're doing everything for him. You're pushing everything forward for him because you're invested and you're really interested and you want things to work out. And so he's like, oh, okay, I don't need to do anything right? And he's not that interested possibly. And then he's still getting his physical and emotional needs met through you, even though he's not doing anything, right? And he doesn't have to commit. He doesn't have to, you know, put any effort in. He doesn't have to invest in the relationship because you're doing all of that for him. And he might even not, not really be interested, but he's still getting his physical needs and his emotional needs met. And so you won't know that he's not really even interested if, if you're the one that's chasing him until one day when you're trying to figure out why he avoids conversation about marriage or commitment or any of that kind of stuff. And you notice him checking out other women and talking to other women on social media. And you're just, you're sitting there baffled. You're like, you know, I put so much into this. I'm doing so much. I'm such a good woman for him. How could he like these other women instead of me? And the reason is, is because you're, he, he was never interested that much in the first place, right? If he's not that into you, you won't know if you're chasing him. If he's not the kind of guy who puts effort into a relationship, you won't know if you're chasing him. Many of the red flags that he has that you don't want to deal with, you won't see them if you're chasing them. He won't be afraid of losing you if you're the one that's chasing him. Instead, you will. You'll be more committed. You will be more invested. You will feel like you're more in love and, and that he's taking you for granted and he's treating you like crap. But you don't, what's going on really is that you're just super invested and he's not. That's it. That's all that's going on. And so this is my suggestion. Do not chase men. Don't do it. Instead, use a technique that I call leaning back. So leaning back, first of all, I want to, I want to mention this. It doesn't mean that you should do nothing, right? A lot of women are like, okay, I'm leaning back. How long should I wait until he contacts me in the leaning back phase? That's not what leaning back is, right? It's not a technique that you do when you're waiting for him to call you, right? That's not what it is. I have a whole video on it. If you want to go check out more about leaning back, I have a video. It's called how to lean back and get him chasing you. Also leaning back does not mean no initiating contact. A lot of women go, they, they're like, okay, I'm, I'm in no contact with the guy that I'm dating. And I'm like, did you break up? And she's like, no, I'm just waiting for him. And I'm like, that's not no contact, right? You shouldn't be in no contact. Instead, what you want to do is show him that you're interested in him. You want to show him that you're interested. And then you give him space to pursue, to chase, and then to invest in you, right? Most masculine men in the presence of a feminine woman, even men who have been in their feminine for a while or letting women chase him or all that kind of stuff. If a man sees a woman and he's masculine in his core and he's in the presence of a feminine woman and he's attracted to her, a man will end up behaving in a masculine way. And so a woman who is leaning back, 
most men will start to behave in a masculine way around them, right? If he's interested and you're leaning back and you've let him know that you're interested, most likely he will start to chase, pursue, and move towards you with his energy. Second, what you want to do is shift your mindset, right? Get, get away from this mindset of trying to get this specific guy, right? That's what a lot of women are doing is they come to me and they're like, there's this one dude and he's like sleeping with other women and he's like looking at porn all the time and he's, you know, running around doing whatever and he's not interested in commitment. He's not interested in marriage. He's not interested in kids. And these are all the things that I want. How do I get him to start doing what I want him to do? Get out of that mindset. Because when you're in that mindset, what you're doing is you're putting him on a pedestal. You're saying this man is more valuable than I am. He's more valuable than my needs, my wants, my desires, the things that I care about in my life. And what you want to do instead is shift your mindset to having to getting the relationship that you want to have. So go and start dating more than one guy, get an orbit of men around you and let the ones who want to prove that they want the relationship that you want to step up and pursue you towards that. Then you get to choose who you date and who you don't date. It's not you know, I'm stuck on this one guy and I'm trying to force him to be the man that I want him to be. And I'm trying to force him to step up and do all these things. Instead, you've got a, you're coming from abundance. That's a scare. You know, the other one's a scarcity mindset. The one guy you're in scarcity. If you've got a bunch of options of men, you're in abundance, right? And what you're waiting for is a guy to pursue you and step up and create the relationship that you want to get. If you're stuck on one guy trying to force him to be the right man for you, you're starting off in a losing battle and you're just going to get hurt. 